Some people are saying that Fire King can't be a budget competitive Yu-Gi-Oh deck. I'm telling you, you're wrong. I think Fire King Pure has a certain allure to it, guys. It's a fun deck, it's a cool deck, but more importantly, it's Fire Kings. How can you hate on Fire Kings? Today, big dog, I'm gonna be giving you a competitive Pure Fire King deck profile and letting you know all of my honest thoughts on it. Let's go ahead and jump on in. What's going on with ya, big dog? And it is an amazing day for Yu-Gi-Oh! I hope that your day, phenomenal. But if it isn't, don't let what happened at the beginning of your day ruin the rest of your day. Today, big dog, we're gonna be talking about Fire Kings. And this deck is one of the decks that are held near and dear to my heart. Uh, not only is Beast Warrior, Wing Beast, the BBWs, some of my favorite typings when it comes to guards outside of Fiends. We already know that. Um, this deck is a 10-year-old deck that just everybody seems to love. And today, I'm going to be giving you my breakdown on how a pure Fire King deck will look. Uh, hopefully, going to be really, really budget once Oconix, uh drops in pipes. So by the time Saturday comes around, I hope that this is like a $50 powerhouse of a Yu-Gi-Oh deck. Let's go ahead and jump into the profile. And our main goal here is going to be building a consistent uh, Fire King deck that you guys can approach and you can take your advice or take the advice or take cards and ideas from here however you want to, but also giving you options in case uh, you wanted to play a more complicated version. Maybe you wanna play a Snake Eyes or the Snake Eyes Azamina, maybe even a Snake Eyes Azamina Fiendsmith version. But Let's go ahead and start off with the main deck. The starters of this deck, you've got to play 12 in just about any modern Yu-Gi-Oh deck. There's three copies of Fire King Courtier Yoconix. Fun fact about this, I thought I could get away with only playing two copies of Courtier. And then you start to realize that the deck uh, does have consistency problems that Courtier solves. I really wish that this monster was a Beast Warrior because then it'd be searchable by Tinky. And I think we'd have it even another reason to say that pure Fire Kings are actually crazy, crazy good. But uh, until then, it's one of the best cards in the deck because it does allow you to search Chicky Nuggy and trigger Chicken Nuggets its effect. So it may look like you have six starters in a 40 card deck, but in actuality, guys, you kind of only have five because if you draw both of these cards, you summon Oconix, you destroy a fire, and then you can trigger Ponix from your hand to be able to summon itself to the side of the field. Um, other starters include two copies of Fire King Island. This is a pure deck, so we not only up on the island, we also up on the Sanctuary. The last card to make it 12 starters was one for one. I was really against this card because it can only summon Ponix from the deck. Like this isn't Snake Eyes, there's no Snake Eyes cards in here. But sometimes just getting into your Ponix is one of the most important things. And I didn't really want to play a third island because as you guys already know, Ponix gets the Sanctuary, Sanctuary gets the island. So technically I'd be playing like nine islands and that that's not always the best thing in the world. So I decided to go for one for one here. Um, and that's what I did for my for my starting lineup. Now for the extender cards, I think that it's also important to play two copies of Gruenix. Now I could be wrong. You guys could probably get away with one copy of Gruenix, but in this particular deck, seeing Gruenix in your hand is actually a great thing. Two is actually a good thing. Uh, three copies of Karen, that's pretty standard. Uh, two copies of Arvata, this card's crazy. I did want to play another copy, but keep in mind, are about to eat your normal summon if you decide to summon it. So you are getting a little heavy on the normal summons in this deck. One copy of Barong. Uh, this is what a card that I've seen a lot of players play two of, and I don't think that they're incorrect. Um, just know that a lot of times you'll be destroying other cards outside of Barong. And if you actually get to that point where you're destroying your second Barong, you're probably in a really good spot anyway and you're already winning. But I did decide to drop that for Rong Bali. Uh, another thing that Fire King, and this is what my boy Jip taught me about Fire King, you know, one of the best players in the world. Uh, one thing that Pure Fire King has over the other variants is that you can play cards like Wrong Bali and you can gain the maximum potential for it. Being able to negate a spell and trap card is actually crazy. And there's actually quite a few decks that don't know what to do. If you have a monster negate on the field and a spell trap negate on the field. Like, it's not just about putting multiple monster gates. Sometimes just having... The versatility of having both of those is crazy. And this deck has access to it. Uh, and then the one copy of the mandatory Grunix because we do play uh, the Okanix, right? Uh, from here, I tried to get this deck as consistent as possible. One thing that I absolutely loved about this deck over the TCG and Master Duel is that we have three Pot of Prosperity. Then the Banlist came out. So we have one copy of Pot of Prosperity. Only one Skyburn. I think you can sideboard the second. This, card, this card's like, 
incredibly good against Rogue, but not really great against the best decks in the world, right? And then I actually do play one copy of Firestorms of Atlantis. Through my testing, I realized that Firestorms is incredible in the later portions of the game because being able to destroy a fire monster will trigger cards like Garunix in your graveyard. You can trigger Kirin, you can trigger Arvata. Um, but also the graveyard effect is, is stupid good. Uh, so if you guys are going to be playing like uh, maybe a Diabell line in there, maybe you can afford that and you want to have a little bit more consistency uh, with this deck, what I would do is I would cut, you're gonna have to cut something like this. So three wanted, one Diabell, one one for one. That, that actually works too. And it does still serve the same purpose. If you guys wanted to go like a pure Snake Eyes route, then you're literally going to be playing the minimum cards of Fire Kings, like very, very minimalistic engine. And you'll do something like this and you can play all of the Snake Eyes and Fiend Smith and all the cards that you desire. So for the people that did have the big bucks and wanted to play something a little bit more, there you have it. For the interruption cards, and this, the thing that I like about this deck is that it does set up like one and two card combos, right? But then from there, you can play a ton of interruptions. So three call by, three Ash, three Effect Veiler, three Nib, three Imperm. Uh, that, that's very, very standard. And I was fighting myself between the three copy of Droll and Lockbird and the three copy of Fantastical Dragon Fantastic. So let's weigh the benefits and the drawbacks. The benefit of Droll is that if your opponent Molchermies you, right? If they Perilia you, you can Droll yourself. This deck does not need to search a lot. So you can Droll yourself. And then after you drolled yourself, your opponent's not drawing anymore. Droll is also pretty good in a lot of against a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh decks. On the other hand, Phantasme is a really good going second card. Phantasme allows you to fix your hands. It's target protection from Imperm, you know, stuff like that. It, it's just a solid card. Um, some other cards that I wanted, I thought about running was Dominus Impulse. The reason why I went against Impulse is because I think that Nib and Valor are very impactful. And I wanted to keep those in over Dominus Impulse and also budget. Like, not everybody can afford Dominus Impulse, and I wanted this deck to be as presentable, as cheap as possible. For the extra deck, World Sea Dragons Elantis. Uh, I'm just going to blaze through this because, to be honest with you, this is. Th this part of the extra deck is so standard. So, uh, boom. Then two Garunix. If you're playing pure, you need two. And then all Mirage. That's the entire extra deck, guys. Not really much to say about it because you're really going to summon this, 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 this most of the time. You'll probably summon none of the other cards, right? So that's all it is. But let me show you the combo. The combo requires your conics plus any fire monster. And I'm not going to lie, chat. Just about every single one of these combos leads to the exact same thing. You're going to normal summon conics, destroy your fire monster to be able to add the Chicky Nuggy. Chicky Nuggy will see the card getting destroyed, so it'll summon itself. And then it will add your Fire King Sanctuary. You'll activate the Sanctuary to be able to get your Fire King Island. I'm gonna go ahead and place it right here. And then use your Island to destroy the Yoconix. You'll add Sacred of the Fire King Garunix. You'll activate your Yoconix and your Garunix. So you'll summon, then you will summon. And then you'll activate the effect of your Garunix. You'll destroy your Vata to be able to summon back a Fire Monster from your graveyard to your hand. Now, from here, I strongly advise, uh, sometimes this can be ignored, but it's strongly advised that you use two monsters for a Link Summon, and that Link Summon is IP Mascarena. You then use IP plus Garunix for another Link Summon. You make out your Promethean Princess. You then use your Promethean Princess. You summon out Arvata, and then you use these two cards for your last Link Summon. You go into Amblo Well. Almost every single one of your combos is going to end up and something like this, Amblowell, Arvata, pass. There, there's, there's not a lot of variance, right? So you guys wanted a simple deck to learn. I'm telling you, gonna be like this. Now, the only time that the combo changes is if you have access to one of those cards that I mentioned, then you'll probably wind up with a Kieran in your hand somehow, some way, right? But let me explain how this works. So you have Fire King Arvata to be able to negate an opponent's card effect and destroy a fire monster. If you destroy your Swarm Ship Amblowell, you can trigger the effect of your Garunix and you can trigger the effect of your Amblowell. You can summon out IP Mascarena. 
you can summon out Garunix. You can then use Garunix's effect to destroy out the Fire King High Avatar Kirin, and then Kirin can trigger its effect. You can destroy another card uh, on the field by summoning out the Yokonix, right? Yokonix can then trigger its effect. You'll destroy the Arvata. And a lot of times, I actually like to get a Kirin in my hand just in case something goes down. And so you can modify the effect of Volcanics to eight. Then you can trigger the Irvata. If you destroy a card effect like uh, Rambali, you can summon Rambali here. Or you could just go ahead and summon out uh, your Ponix. Your Ponix effect can then get you either follow up through, uh, like if, if you fear that this is going to get cooked, then you can get another Sanctuary or you can get a Skyburn. You also, if your opponent's special summons, you can go Promethean Princess, target the Ponix, target your opponent monster, chain link to IP Masquerina, link these two off. And this is what I didn't do during the dual, dual challenge and I should have done it. You summon out the IP Masquerina or the SP Little Knight or Nightmare Unicorn if you can't afford it. You summon out the Promethean Princess and Princess only needs to destroy one monster. It doesn't need to destroy both. I see what you guys are saying about the glare. I'm gonna put it right here. I'm gonna fix the glare in the later videos because this is the first time we've done the setup like this, right? It doesn't need to destroy both monsters. So, so long as you chain the IP link off, you summon the SP, you can banish another card on the field. And then you still have Fire King Sanctuary. This was an eight because we added an eight. You can use those two to XE summon on your opponent's turn to Heyang. The best part about it is that if your opponent used the monster effect before, you can banish the SP before destroying everything and you'll get it right back. So incredibly simple. It looked like it wasn't a lot, but as you guys can see, it was definitely a lot. And another big thing that I want to say, because I'm not done here yet, it's kind of stupid, right? Um, you can still use Kirin's other effect to destroy your own monster, to summon your Kirin to your side of the field, and then trigger that effect, summon out this for the follow-up, and you can summon out the Ponix. So now on the follow-up, you have a negation on your opponent's monster effect with the destruction. You also have these one of these cards in your hand, which Skyburn can destroy, 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 do whatever you want. Uh, and, and that's just how the tempo of this deck works. Once it starts to get going, your opponent is completely cooked. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you guys enjoyed this deck profile. Uh, of course, if you want to see more deck profiles, we're going to do them on stream. I actually like doing them on stream. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, can't wait to show you guys, and I'll catch you on the next video.